think so much of writing is really the courage to sort of express ourselves and find our voice and be true to our voice and put it out there, not try to be someone else's voice. You know, the writing doesn't have to be perfect in the beginning, but really being true to your authentic voice. That's the most important thing. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher, and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. At this point in my entrepreneurial journey, there are a few things that I consider myself a total newbie at. But by now, you've probably heard that I'm writing my first book, and that whole thing definitely has me feeling like a first-timer. It was important for me to navigate this new world of book writing and publishing with a team of experts who know the ropes, and I am absolutely thrilled to have one of those experts and now dear friend on the show with me now. Margaret Riley King is a partner and a literary agent in WME's global book division, representing a roster of best-selling and award-winning authors in all areas of fiction and nonfiction. During her 13 years at WME, she has built a specialty in the representation of influential women's voices and has grown this into a literary powerhouse. She is also my book agent, and I feel so lucky to say that. This is a really special conversation about all things writing a book. What does the process look like? How do you get it out into the world? Where do you begin? How do negotiations and promotion work? All things book writing. Before we dive in, I do want to invite you, if you want to learn more about my process as a first-time author, if you want a backstage pass or want to be an insider when it comes time to launch this book, I want for you to head to jennacutcher.com slash book. This is our hub, our home for all things book, and it's where you can sign up so that you are in the know as each phase of the journey unfolds. I'm so excited to invite you to become an insider into this process, this project, this dream of mine. And I just want to make sure that you know, you can head to jennacutcher.com slash book to learn more about what's going on and how you can be a part of it. So are you ready? Let's dive on in. Margaret is about to answer all of our questions about book writing and publishing and beyond. And this is a conversation that will explain a lot of what's been happening behind the scenes as I've worked on writing my very first book. This is so exciting. My friend Amy Porterfield and her podcast, Online Marketing Made Easy, are officially on the HubSpot Podcast Network. If you've been around the Gold Digger podcast for a while, you know that Amy is one of the reasons why I launched my own show. Well, now we're BFFs and the rest is podcasting history. With a focus on online business, including digital courses, list building, social media, and webinars, Online Marketing Made Easy breaks down big ideas and strategies into actionable step-by-step processes, and the show's designed to get you more results with a whole lot less stress. If you like Gold Digger, I can pretty much guarantee that you're going to love Amy's show too. She digs into topics like seven email copywriting tips to convert subscribers and what happens when a launch doesn't go as planned and so much more. Listen to online marketing made easy wherever you get your podcasts. So I get to introduce a lot of guests on my show, but it feels way more special when it's someone that I have a personal relationship. So Margaret, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Jenna. I'm so excited for this conversation today. One, I get to be a student of your expertise, but two, we kind of get to let people in on the process that we've been on together, this journey we've been on together over the last year and and beyond, which I'm sure we'll share that story. But before we do all of that, walk me through your journey. How did you get to where you are today? Right. Well, it has been a journey that I have really just sort of followed the unfolding (laughs) on. I have, since I was a kid, loved stories, storytelling, 
I love great songs. I'm, I was born and raised in Nashville, songwriting, you know, great songs. I was a theater kid all growing up and actually minored in theater in college. Loved movies, loved to read, loved any sort of stories that moved me or made me think differently or learn about other places or, you know, take me out of my head. And after college, I started, I thought an agency was where all of the great storytellers are represented. And that's where the great stories must start. So I started working in the mailroom at William Morris Agency, which is exactly what it sounds. I delivered yeah. mail. I delivered mail I ran, uh, with the mail cart, talked to anyone who would talk to me, and ultimately then ended up working in as an assistant for a woman named Jennifer Rudolph Walsh, who taught me almost everything I know and was the head of the book department and a longtime literary agent. And I have been here ever since. And now I'm a, an agent and a partner here at WME, William Morse Endeavor. And I am so in love with what I do. I love your story. I literally feel like it's out of a movie, like starting in the mailroom, working your way up. Do they even still have mailrooms? That's oh, my question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a little different now because mail is different, but it's it's sort of the same. Yeah, it's the same concept. Um, I love it. And there's, a, there's you know, some of it, I guess, is, uh, you know, you learn the ropes and their hierarchy thing, which that part's a little silly, but you really do. It does give you a good sense of the scope of the agency. You get to see what all the different departments are, the, you know, the whole mosaic. Yeah, I love that. So what is your favorite part about representing authors as an agent? And what does an agent do? These are questions that people ask all the time. And let me be honest, I didn't fully understand it before I started working with you. Yeah, so I represent writers. And you know, I wear a lot of hats. So I guess at the basic level, I manage writers' careers and negotiate their publishing deals. I also, you know, I'm a little bit of a managerial role. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a real sort of strategic high-level thinker. So there's like an interdisciplinary strategy too. A lot of my writers are sort of are in the cultural influence space is what I call it. And, you know, have podcasts like you or a big speaking business or, you know, maybe want to write a screenplay or have their books adapted or produce, you know, partnerships, activism. There's all these other pieces that the books either support or the books are sort of the launching pad. And I get to be involved in all those too. So what do you look for when it comes to representing authors? I love your approach and I love a lot of the authors you've represented from Glennon Doyle to Sue Monk Kidd. How do you decide who you choose to represent as an agent? I, it's sort of a gut thing, right? Uh, anything that moves me and that I feel sort of this I mean, it sounds a little woo woo, but there's, there is, it's, there's like a connection there. A lot of it has to do with voice, you know, voices that impact me. And then I, I'm, you know, can see that they would have impact in a bigger way. You know, people who have big, bold ideas that are shaping culture or have the potential to shape culture and create real impact. That's sort of my, that sort of sets me on fire. It's so crazy, Margaret. So let me just let our listeners in on a story. So when I started thinking about writing a book, I was really dead set on not telling a single soul. So I worked on my book behind the scenes. Nobody knew about it, not even my sister. I just opened up a Word doc and started writing. And once I finally started sharing with my inner circle, okay, I think I'm going to do this thing. I was having a phone conversation with my friend, Jamie Kern Lima, who we both know. Yeah, love And you. she brought you up and she was like, you know, I, I feel like you guys would be a really good fit together. And I remembered that. And I'm not one to ask for favors or connections because I know sometimes it can get weird or tricky and you just stuck in my brain. And so then a few weeks later, I was like, you know, Jamie, you said you'd be open to connecting me with Margaret. Would you make that connection? And the funniest thing happened is when I searched your name, up pops an email from three years ago of you in my inbox talking about writing a book. Mm -hmm. And it's hilarious because I actually had a folder in my Gmail titled, If I Write a Book. And I told my team, 
anything that comes in about a book, just put it into this folder. I'm not ready yet, but I'll know when I'm ready when it's time. And so seeing that three years ago, you saw something in me and then seeing how we were connected without even recognizing that initial connection point. It was just, I love the focus on intuition and some of the wooey stuff, because I really do believe that there is a right time, a right place and a right partner. And I'm really, really glad that we found all of that. I know me too. It really does feel like kismet. It's crazy. It was just wild when I was like, wait, you've messaged me before. Wait, you've emailed me. Wait, I, what? Wrote, you, I wrote you a love letter that I remember. <laughs> I remember writing. And when I got that message from you, like the first thought in my head was, because I never heard back from you when I sent it, you know, yeah. so I sent a love letter out into the abyss and a message in a bottle. And I was like, oh, she must have been thinking about me all these years. <laughs> <laughs> but it did just feel like, you know, it's, and it was a good lesson that I, I found you on Instagram or on a, I don't entirely remember how I came across your work, but it wasn't the marketing stuff that drew me because that's yeah. fascinating. You are so good at it. And that's not, you know, I'm not, I don't have my own business. I'm, you know, I'm doing this whole other thing. I was drawn to you by your voice. I loved mm. how you even talked about the marketing stuff, the market, the, the entrepreneurial stuff, but I really loved how you, and I loved how you talked about being a woman and ambition and your fertility journey and, you know, your body and selfhood and, and growing up and, working hard. And I just was so drawn to your voice. And I was, I don't know exactly what the book's going to be, but she's going to write a book and I hope I get to be there. So I'm glad I, I took that chance and sent you that letter. It was, I know it's just awesome. I just think about the first time we got on zoom, it was like, Oh yeah, we're friends. Let's just, let's talk. Like it was, I love that. And I think that's so important. So what is your relationship with authors? Like there are so many people involved in the process of writing a book. All of this was brand new to me. There's the publisher, the editor, the agent. So can you explain exactly kind of what your role is and how you help manage your clients in the process of it? Yeah. So it always starts in, you know, different, you'd already written a whole manuscript when we started working together. Some people just have an idea or maybe not even an idea. And the first step is getting that material. What is the book? You know, working together, I, I have an editorial eye and like to get in there and get the manuscript to the best possible place with, with the author before we send it to, to publishers. And then finding the best possible creative and professional match for that author and editor at a publishing house and negotiating the best possible deal for them. And then, you know, and then the, you'd think that would be the end of it, but then everything kicks into high gear where it's managing that relationship, you know, sometimes playing bad cop and, and being a part of the discussions on the marketing and the publicity of the book and the lead up to the book and distribution and crisis management and the cover and the title. And really I'm, you know, I'm an advocate for the author and I take that very seriously. I love that. It's been amazing having you. It's like the fairy godmother of book world. <laughs> saying, come with me, I've got you. And, you know, this process is just so different than a lot of the digital space that a lot of us operate in. Yeah. And so can you kind of share? So if somebody is listening, and they're dreaming of writing a book, mm -hmm. where do you begin? Like, can you walk me through the process of how a book deal even works? Yeah, so well, it all starts with the material, right? A great idea is a great idea, but it also, you know, a book, it's, it's all about, you know, ab about the, what you're going to write. And, you know, I think so much of writing is really the courage to sort of express ourselves and find our voice and be true to our voice and put it out there, not try to be someone else's voice, you know, not try to, the writing doesn't have to be perfect in the beginning, but really being true to your authentic voice. So that's the most important thing is focusing on that knowing what you want to do, what you want to write, taking it as far as you possibly can on your own, and then finding an agent, you know, finding a partner and to guide you through the process, which is sort of its own little bubble and is different than a lot of other industries, you know, and, and then having that person with you the rest of the, you know, along the journey to publishing the book. Yeah, I love that. You know, for me, I did things backwards intentionally. I was just talking to someone who's in the book proposal process. And I was like, you know, I had resisted 
the idea of writing a book for so long. I mean, years and years and years, I was very strong in my conviction. This isn't the time. This isn't for me. I don't even know what I would write about until suddenly the words poured out. And I remember talking to Jamie Kern Lima about her book and she was like, they just poured out of me. It was just like, it was the weirdest thing ever. You know, it was this divine experience. And I was like, there's no way, there's no way. And I am really grateful. I went the route. I went personally from a creative standpoint in terms of creating. I think writing words that tell versus writing words that sell. I think that whole idea of, you know, getting a book deal and then having to live up to that book deal and all that. I think that would have been really intimidating and almost a creative block for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see writers have different approaches and like, how could someone discern like, what step to take first? Do you start writing first? Do you have somebody help you create the idea first? Do you find an agent first? Does it look different for everyone? You write first. You, yeah. you start writing first. You know, the agent actually is, it's the first step in sort of in the getting a deal, but it's also in some ways sort of like the final step in a long process. Yeah. Right. You, you know, you'd also you know, when you know, and you knew when it was your, when it was your time to, when you were ready to put your, your words out there. And in the meantime, you'd also built this amazing, incredible platform upon which to launch a book, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, launching a book is, is really different than, than putting a lot of other things out there, you know, products Mm -hmm. and, and you'd built this platform. So you had the idea, you had the passion, you're ready to do it. And you, and along the way you'd build a platform to really help launch it out there into the world. It's been awesome. And one thing I have to commend you on is I sent you the initial manuscript and I was like so pumped about it, but I was like, it's not quite right. And at the beginning, I was like, well, of course, I'm going to write a business book. I'm, you know, a business podcaster. I talk about marketing. I've been an entrepreneur for a decade. But it was so funny because as I was writing those stories, I was like, but but the ones that really matter, the ones that I really want to tell don't really have anything to do with business. And Mm -hmm. you gave me that permission, that invitation of like, you don't have to put yourself in a box. And the things I remember, the stories that resonate with me have nothing to do with business. And it really opened up the whole process. And it also opened up what I could share in the book, which is very different than the things I've been talking about on this show for the last five years. Does your intuition help guide those discussions or what is that process like for you? Because you were really like a guide on that journey of shifting and opening up the book to be beyond just the entrepreneurial life. Yeah. You know, there's not like a school for editing or a school for like your, (laughs) you know, for knowing what a good book is. So much of it was subjective, obviously, but a lot of it is just instinct. And that's something I think when in the early, like early days of my career and doing that, is learning to not listen to all the other noise and, and see, well, this book did what this, you know, is it exactly like this book that sold a lot of copies or, you know, this thing did well. So maybe, uh, you know, do it this way. It's really just putting all that aside, getting into the, into the words and the stories and listening to and trusting my instincts because I'm a reader and I'm also your audience, right? I'm a, I'm a professional woman. I'm a mom. And I, I have to trust that my instincts is just a reader in many ways. And then also with my business, you know, my business agent hat on. Yes. I love that. A brand new year. I'm not even sure how we got here so fast, but I am wildly grateful for another year with this podcast. And of course, with you. In this season of new beginnings, making a lasting impact on our businesses and customers is more important than ever. If you haven't already implemented a CRM platform into your business, well, now is the time. CRM or customer relationship management is at the heart of turning your side hustle into your success story and your customers into your fans. Reach your customers wherever, whenever with ease, thanks to HubSpot's intuitive visual workflows and bot builders. You'll create scalable automated marketing campaigns across email, social media, web, and customer chat so that your customers hear your messages loud and clear. A HubSpot CRM platform adapts your content for multiple device types so your customers have a great experience no matter where they're viewing it. Learn more about how you can transform your customer experience with a HubSpot CRM platform at HubSpot.com. 
I'm going to share a little bit of our process and then I want you to chime in on the parts I'm missing or not landing quite right. So Mm -hmm. I wrote the manuscript ahead of time. It was the way that I had to do it. I gave myself a deadline. It was literally January 1st and I sent Mm -hmm. it to Margaret on January 1st and was like, I said I would get this to you. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see it again. Yeah, you can send it on January 1st. <laughs> Literally, it was like, Happy New Year. Here you go. And I've learned a lot about myself in this process as well of just the way that I work and, you know, the way the digital world has impacted the way that I create. But then we took the manuscript, chose the top few chapters. I believe we went with three or four to start crafting a proposal. Mm -hmm. So the proposal then is what Margaret shares with the different publishing houses. And you can maybe kind of explain that because there's the publishers and the publishing houses. And then we set up a bunch of phone calls. So walk me through kind of that journey. And then we can talk a little bit more about my experience there. Yeah. So this is sort of, you're writing a nonfiction book, which means it's not a novel, it's nonfiction. So submitting fiction, a novel, a made up story, that's a totally different way of doing it. So, but for nonfiction, you know, you often can sell something on a proposal, which isn't the full book. It is a really detailed overview of what the book is, who the writer is, why they're writing it, who's it for, you know, why now, and a detailed outline of what it's going to be in the entire book. So you have to, you know, the sort of the scaffolding, the blueprint, and then it's sample chapters or material, which can be half the book, or it can be, you know, different chapters to give editors a sense of, oh, here's what the book is in full. Here's the writer. Here's why. Here's what it's going to read like. So they can envision what the whole book is. And then I, when we were ready, you know, we went back and forth. And once we had a proposal, we were ready to go. I crafted my pitch of the book and why publishers should be interested and read it. And, and I sent it, I created a submission list of different editors at different publishing houses. And I really, you know, there's a lot of smaller independent publishing houses. There's self-publishing. There's a lot of different ways to get your story out there. I really only work with the the big five, I guess what they call it, the bigger publishing houses, the Penguin Random House, HarperCollins, Simon & Schuster, Macmillan, Hachette. I wish there were more of them. But And then within those big publishing conglomerates, there's different imprints that are focused on different sort of books and themes. So within those, you find editors at all at different imprints that, that work on these sort of books. And, you know, you only can send to one person within each imprint. So you got to find the person who, you know, loves this stuff or might not even know that this would be perfect for them. But you, you know, you know them well enough or sort of uh, think that this would fit on their list. It's like, there is this sort of like, which I sort of like a matchmaker. It's like putting it's a little bit of matchmaking, right? Yes. You know that they want to buy, you know that they yeah, it's a little like I'm a matchmaker or a puzzle. And yeah, I pitched them the proposal, sent it to them, and the ones who were interested, which ended up being a lot of them, we set up calls for you to speak to all of them because again, now it's sort of like I'm setting you up and it's a little bit like dating. <laughs> and yes. I just think it's so important. The money's important, obviously, the deal retaining all of your, the rights that you can, but it's also a really intimate relationship. It's a professional one, mm-hmm. obviously, but I want my writers to feel so comfortable and protected and safe and pushed a little bit too by their editors. And so you got to like that person. You got to feel comfortable. Yes. yes. It was so fun going through the experience because I had no idea what to expect. And I remember you were like, okay, this is the day I'm sending the proposal out. And I I felt like, you know, there's so many parts of this process where it's like, should I be popping a bottle of champagne right now? Or like, what does it, what does this look like? And you're like, we're not going to hear back for a little bit. And then like later that day, you were like, oh my gosh, we're already hearing back. This is great. And I ended up, I think I did seven calls, I think, with different publishers. And that was super fun for me. And one thing I love about me and Margaret and the way that we work together is that a lot of it is 
energetically and what does our intuition say? And after each call, I would record a voice note to remind myself, okay, this is how I felt about this person, or I really liked this about this editing team. Sometimes you're meeting with just the editor. Sometimes they're bringing on people that help with the promotion or the strategy around the book. And it was so cool too, because we agreed, we both loved the right fit, who is Carrie, who we're working with. And we kind of talked about it before we ever saw any figures or numbers or deals coming through. It was a really great energetic fit, which was just awesome. And it felt so good. But those calls were really interesting to me because I remember asking you, Margaret, I was like, so am I pitching to them? Are they pitching to me? Like, how does this go? So what could somebody expect if they did get a call with an editor? It's a little bit of both. Uh, So, you know, they're pitching themselves to you sort of, here's what we're known for. Here's what we do. Here's how we do it. Here are the people on our team you'd work with. Here's how we envision the book. You know, if they have any sort of editorial remarks already, you know, on the manuscript, like, would you be open to these sort of edits or, you know, switching the structure around, sort of getting a sense of the material, asking questions of you, like if they have have questions about the manuscript or how you would promote it or what your, you know, vision is for the rollout and how you can sort of guarantee that people will, if you have an audience that people will buy it and come to it and that you'll be all in to, to do whatever you can to help get the word out about the book. And then it's also, so it's, it's sort of them pitching you and you pitching them in both (laughs) ways. Right. And, but for Mm -hmm. me, the most important thing is that I can pitch the other. I'm on a lot of those calls and I'll kind of jump in and say the things that the author sometimes is too humble to say or or is, you know, weird to talk about themselves in that way. The most important thing for me is that the author asks questions and make sure that they, in those calls, they get a good sense of, of what a partnership might look like with a potential editor. I love that. So I need to know, you are incredible when it comes to representation and getting a good book deal and making sure that, you know, everyone feels taken care of and that it's the right fit. Do you have any specific negotiation tactics or strategies that you'd share with our listeners? I would say, and it'd be interesting what other people who work with me say, but I (laughs) am, I don't put on some like fake hat, I guess. Like I am very, I'm, I'm who I am and in sort of all my interactions and always have been. So people know what they're getting. You know, I also, my integrity is really important to me and I take my job very seriously and I'm also competitive right, and ambitious, but people I'm negotiating with on the other side, they know what they're getting and they, they think they trust me. You know, they trust that there's, there's like a respect there too. So, you know, and I I often usually end up getting what I want, but a lot of that's trusting my instincts too. And, and, Mm -hmm. you know, listening to that, you know, coming back to the instincts, it's like, I usually sort of know what I want going into it. And I'm pretty strategic about that. And then how to sort of do the magic to make that come to life, you know, and everyone does it differently, but I would say Mm -hmm. instincts. I think your instincts are your superpower without a doubt. And I also think too, and you brought this up, but I just want to commend you. You're so straightforward that it's not wishy-washy. It's like, you know, here's the deadline. Here's what I believe. Here's why this is the right book. Here's the right timing. Here's why I think you'd make a good fit. And there's no really room for nuance in that in a good way where it's very, very clear. And I think, I mean, bravo on your matchmaking abilities because I think you did a great job. But I think, you know, it's it's such a unique thing to be going through as a first time author. And I think there's so much of this world where it's like, holy moly, like this is so different than the digital age that we find ourselves in. So once somebody, it's a lot slower, (laughs) but I'm actually, I'm finding the beauty in that. I think, you know, the challenge for me was doing a lot of this while pregnant. The reason why I wanted to hand you that manuscript on January 1st was that I knew the vision that I held for this year, you know, for what is to come was to grow our family. And I was like, you know, there's pregnancy brain and mental fog and exhaustion. And I was like, I want this to be so good that I need to write it when I'm not trying to grow another human being in their ligaments. So that was my big motivator in getting it done ahead of time, which actually I'm just so grateful for because it made the editing process just so much easier. 
But once you do the calls, you get the book deal, then what does that process and timeline look like for people? Because it is a long process. Yeah, you get the book deal. And then you start you go into the manuscript and you start and the, the editor will usually go through and do sometimes like several reads and it's deep reads. I mean, that publishing isn't slow because people are lazy or like just slow for the sake of being slow. You know, yep. it's an art, right? And you can't rush yep. that. And doing a deep dive in a manuscript to make sure that you like you want to make it a, the best it can possibly be. You can't just do that overnight. You know, it is sort of this process and the good editors really do get in there and read it several times and think about it of, of you know, what, what's the best way to do that? Is this the right way? And that's, you know, you can't rush that. So then there's some back and forth on, on editing. And that's sort of, that's where we are in the process is like, we're finalizing it. We're getting those final touches on it to get the, you know, the perfect manuscript where then we, you know, we copy edit and send it off to the printer, Right. And then there's a little bit of a beat and then you start working on the cover and the marketing and the rollout, you know, the publication date and sort of what we're going to do to, to sell it into the bookstores and the, you know, selling it to the sales department before they sell it into the bookstore. So it is a whole process that can, it felt really slow to me too. And then when I first got started working in the business and now it, it actually, it works. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's so amazing. Cause I, I think there's such a beautiful thing. I, I I kind of think about writing a book a lot like being pregnant in the gestation period and all that's required for you to be ready to give birth and, and take care of a human. And it's been so interesting doing all of this while being pregnant as well. Yeah, there is. And there's a longevity to it. Digital, you know, you could, it doesn't have to be, you know, perfect. It just kind of, you, then you put out the next thing and then it goes, but books are, you know, Books don't go away. This is like going to be a legacy, right? Yes, yes. One thing that I have found so surprising, and I was just actually talking to my mom about this the other day, is I, I started encouraging my mom. We're both avid readers. We love to read. We talk about all the books we read. We share a Kindle library. And I was telling my mom, I said, Mom, next book you read, read the acknowledgments. Read how many people help to create a book. And I, I didn't understand that until I was in the process myself. And it's been so amazing. I've read so many different books this year that I've just loved. But I've also read all the acknowledgments because it really does take a village. Mm -hmm. And when you're writing a book, it's like you want it to be the right message, the right time, the right meaning you want, you know, to mean what you say and say what you mean. What does it look like for you? Because you kind of start at that starting line, but you almost kind of bring that team along. And I mean, there are a lot of hands in the pot. There are a lot of opinions, ideas, considerations. What does that look like for someone who's never been through the process? Yeah, there are a lot of people who are involved in different points in the creation of it, you know, at the publishing house too, it's, you know, the editor. And then there's a copy editor who you'll never meet, who literally reads every single word and makes sure every single period is in their correct space. <laughs> and every single word is spelled correctly. Talk about intimately knowing your book. Right. Um, Thank God for those though, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. I know there's the people who actually pick out the paper and the font and the, yes. the how it's going to like look on the page and designing it. And then there's people who work at the printers. There's the people who help uh, with, you know, the art directors who do the cover design and, you know, take their job or artists. And there are, you know, the sales force. There's an entire sales team who will read your book. They're tasked with selling it to Amazon, you know, because if Amazon doesn't take it, then how are we going to get it to the people? Like selling it yeah. into Barnes and Noble, selling it into your local bookstores and airports. And they've got to have a passion. They've got to sell it to these people to say, all right, we'll buy this many copies to sell in our stores. Uh, and you might not, hopefully you'll get to meet those people too, but there's so many different steps along the way and then making sure that the books stay in stock and, you know, Part of my job, uh, look, we're working with the best publishers, so they make it easy. But part of my job is making sure everybody's doing their job. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're like the general contractor of the book. <laughs> right. <laughs> so looking at your career, you have represented some incredible, incredible authors. I want to know, Margaret, what are you most proud of? Oh, wow. I would say that being able to be a megaphone 
for these writers who, you know, who are making a difference in the world and some of the best storytellings I know. I mean, if I were to tell my 20 year old self that I'd had the distinct honor of representing Sue Munt Kidd and Jeanette Walls, you know, by the time I was 35 years old, my heart would have exploded. <laughs> you know, elevating women's voices, that's really, really important to me. And if you look at my authors I work with, it's a lot of women. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's on purpose. I mean, I think that I think books can change the world. I, I, it sounds sort of hokey, but I see it. I see it every day. And being able to elevate these powerful voices, you know, with these big ideas, it's an honor. I mean, I that's why I love getting out of bed, even on the bad days, even mm-hmm. the days that are sort of tough sometimes. I I just feel a real purpose in what I do. Well, it comes through in the way that you show up. Since you had to pitch my book, you are probably the perfect person to ask this question. Give our listeners a sneak peek of what they can get excited for when it comes to my book. Oh, my gosh. So I think so many women are going to find themselves somewhere in this book and find some sort of wisdom, whatever they need in that moment inside these pages. The books inspired me. To, Mm. you know, this isn't a book, thank goodness, about hustling harder. I feel like for so long, women, I'd hustle, hustle, hustle. Like even, you know, from the soccer field when we were kids to if you want to, you know, as a woman, if you want to hustle, keep, you know, get up earlier so you can, you know, do this before you start doing this and then go seize the day and and then also have kids and be the best parent. I mean, this (laughs) book to me is about learning to listen to your heart, to your soul, whatever it is you want to call it, that thing inside of you and paying attention to it. You know, women are, it's hard. Women aren't so good at that sometimes. And it's about finding and living a life that gives you real meaning and joy. And if it is, you know, working hard, but then being able to enjoy the, you know, enjoy the fruits of your labor. And to me, that's just, it's just so many people need that. I needed it. And I think that there's, you're going to change a lot of women's lives with this. And Mm. I'm, I just am so excited. I can't, we can't, we need it now. Yes. (laughs) now. I am so grateful for your guidance and your leadership and your belief and your partnership. And, you know, I love to the conversations that we have beyond the work that we're doing that center around this idea and this notion that I think we all really woke up to over the last year. And we're all kind of in that questioning phase of like, Mm -hmm. am I happy? And what will make me happy? And am I tired? Mm -hmm. What does my soul need? And like, when are the times in my life where I really listen to myself? And what did that yield? And Mm -hmm. I can see it in you and I can see it in myself and Carrie and, and the whole team that's working on this. And I'm I'm just so excited to get this into the hands of this community, these listeners, and so many more people. And I just want to say thank you for championing me even years ago. I apologize that you didn't get a response. That's totally (laughs) my fault. But I'm grateful that the time came when it was the right time. Me too. And you know what? It always does. It's what the longer I, the longer I'm alive and live more life, it always does. Mm -hmm. It really um, does. Thank you for allowing me to be on this journey with you. And I told you before, this is your first of many books. So I want to make sure you enjoy it as much as possible. (laughs) You'll keep doing it. You know, what's been so cool, though, about this process, and I think it's important for people to hear too, is, you know, I went into this and I remember even one of our first conversations telling you, like, I'm not writing about hustling and working harder. I'm not going to do this book through that lens. I've seen too many people preach about, you know, this slow living or presence, and then their behind the scenes is chaotic and stressful. And knowing, you know, I'm going to be working on this while I'm pregnant, or I'm going to be editing this with a newborn. I'm really, really proud of the way that we've approached this from this like place of peace, because I'm like, this is a really big process. And I just think having people like you who are aligned in that have made it such a great journey where I'm like, yeah, this is fun. This is really fun. Yeah. Well, I told you I, I, after the manuscript, I had this vacation planned. That was, I hadn't, yes. we had, when's the last time any of us have gone on vacation? And right. I, 
I was inspired by you and watching how you live your life, by the way, where you're like, I can call you in 20 minutes after I put Coco down. I'm like, yes, oh, of course. <laughs> like, thank goodness you're doing that and managing all that. But I actually took a vacation. I left my phone in my room. No one was going to, you know, and my, my own, you taught me how to do that. And it was the best thing yeah. I ever did. I actually took a break, really took yes. a break, not a pretend. So when I've seen a shift even just past that vacation in a good way yeah. where I'm like, wow, we're doing it. We're doing it together. And I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast Oh my gosh, and letting people me. into this process. Get ready. Are Get you, ready. Can world. you tell the people when, when, when Not it's yet. Okay. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> They'll know soon enough, Here right? We Here we go. <laughs> I sincerely hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. I know for me, it's so fun to just reflect on this whole journey of writing a book and getting a book deal and getting it out into the world soon. And I hope that it kind of peeled back the curtain on the process. I am brand new to this process. This is my only experience in it. And I've had a lot of questions along the way. But I'm so grateful for people like Margaret who are championing me, who are coming alongside of me, who are guiding me on this path. And I'm so excited, like so excited for you to hear more about the book and what it's going to be about and who it's for and why now all decisions that I've had to make over time. I can't wait for it to get into your hands. I really, really hope you enjoyed this episode of the Gold Digger podcast. And if you want to learn more about the book or become an insider or make sure that you are ready for all different updates from launch to cover decisions to the bonuses we'll have if you pre-order, head to jennacutcher.com slash book. That's jennacutcher.com slash book. There's all kinds of information awaiting you and a special invite for you to join my insider book community. Until next time, gold diggers, keep on digging your biggest goals. And thank you so much for championing me as I dig into mine. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 